So, we have been looking at uh, iterative methods for solving linear algebraic equations and we have looked at uh, gauss seidel jacobi relaxation methods and its variants. We also have looked at the convergence behavior, we have analyzed convergence behavior and we know how to ensure convergence by modifying the problem and so on. Now, there is one more iterative method which is quite popular and which also converges pretty fast. So, this is numerical optimization based method. So, well one of the reasons for covering this is that uh, this will be also useful when we go forward to uh, nonlinear algebraic equations. So, as I said uh, we want to we want to solve this problem A x equal to B and then this can be solved by minimizing with respect to x A x minus B transpose A x minus B. If I minimize this with respect to x then I can reach the solution of A x equal to B. In fact, I reach the solution if I, if I take this as phi then dou phi by dou x the necessary condition for optimality turns out to be A transpose A x minus B equal to 0 and obviously, if A is non singular uh, if necessary condition is satisfied you will reach the optimum. The second derivative what is second derivative here? The second derivative will be A transpose A which is symmetric positive definite. So, you are actually reaching the global minimum. Okay. Uh, yesterday somebody had a doubt that uh, iterative methods that we have looked at uh, will they give you local solution or global solution? Jacobi method, gauss seidel method, relaxation method if those methods are converging if we know that they are converging they will converge to the global solution for linear algebraic equations there is nothing like local and global solution they are converging they will converge to the global solution. Now, of course, we can a little bit simplify this if A is a symmetric positive definite matrix in that case we can just minimize with respect to x half x transpose A x minus x transpose B. Uh, if A is symmetric positive definite okay. A is a special case symmetric positive definite. Then minimizing this objective function will give you the, the optimum. Now, I want to do a general method called gradient based optimization method. This is now described in appendix D. Okay. In my notes this is described in appendix D on page 48. Okay. I want to solve this using a numerical search. I want to solve this using numerical search. I do not want to I do not want to use this condition directly. I do not want to use this condition and solve it. Okay. If I were to use this condition and then solve it for x it would be a it will be either an iterative method or it will be a direct method I do not want to go into that. I want to I do not want to use gauss seidel or anything I want to use an iterative scheme uh, which is based on optimization techniques. Okay. Optimization techniques in general uh, deal with uh, so I am going to do this gradient method. This is also called a steepest descent method. So, right now I am going to be worried about developing an iterative method for minimizing with respect to x some objective function phi x, where phi x is from r n to r. Phi x is a scalar objective function, some scalar objective function, it did not be norm it need not be it, it is some objective function that you have defined. Okay. 
it need not be always positive i am not worried about that i am just worried about a scalar objective function so it is rn to r okay i want to come up with a iterative scheme to uh, reach a local minimum in this particular case because in general uh, phi x need not be uh, nicely behaved okay and then after i derive that i want to apply it to this specific case okay so i want to uh, it's a uh, the purpose is twofold one is to introduce to you gradient based methods okay and its variants which are very very useful in optimization and i'll show you what are the applications later so uh, numerical search uh, which is based on gradient and then we will of course apply it to our specific problem that is solving linear algebraic equations okay so this method is also known as steepest descent you may have done this in your undergraduate i am not too sure it's called steepest descent it's also called cauchy method it's called cauchy's method it is known by very various names uh, gradient based method the the basic idea is that if i if i look at a level surface what is a level surface Se level surface is a is set of points x is set of point all points x such that phi x is equal to constant so scalar objective function right so scalar objective function so phi x equal to constant i want to look at i want to look at uh, level surfaces that is i want to look at locus of x let's say if it is two dimensional object if it is x is a vector which is in two dimensions x1 x2 okay i am actually looking at okay so this is say c1 this is c2 this is c3 this is c4 and so on so this is my x1 x2 this is my x1 x2 plane i am plotting all those points i am plotting all those points in x1 x2 plane for which phi of x1 x2 is equal to constant so let's say this is this is 5 this is 4 this is 3 this is 2 i am plotting all the points locus of all the points these are called as level surfaces they are called as level surfaces okay i am not plotting phi of x in this in this plot i am not plotting phi of x okay i am plotting i am plotting so actually if you do a three dimensional plot x1 x2 and phi okay this will be nothing but a cross sectional plane projected onto x1 x2 it set of all points see if uh, have you seen matlab symbol matlab symbol is like one peak right now if you take it as a objective function okay let's say height above the or take mountain height of the mountain above the uh, ground surface is the objective function okay i am trying to find out set of all points where the height is constant okay how will you get it take a plane horizontal to xy project it onto x and y you will get you will get the set of all points so these are set of all points what is phi x view phi x as a height okay and x1 x2 as ground locations if you take constant level it's also called level surface probably the reason for level surface is to relate it to level okay they are called as level surfaces okay now i'm going to use the local behavior of this level surfaces to come up with a iteration scheme for solving uh, for solving this minimization problem for the time being i am going to forget about solving linear algebraic equations i am just concentrating on this general problem some phi of x it need not be this phi of x any phi of x okay not not a specific one so what i am going to do now is let's say i have some guess 
solution x k is some is some guess solution x k may not unlikely to minimize but s a is my guess what is the philosophy in iterative methods you start with a guess and then you move on to next guess right start with one guess move on to next guess and then hope that iterations converge okay to the solution in this case what it will converge to will be a local solution well in some cases it will converge to the global solution but that depends it depends upon the problem a it depends upon your initial guess if the problem is highly nonlinear with funny shapes it depends upon if the problem is one which has only one peak or one valley well you know it will reach the global minimum okay so xk is my guess solution well our good old friend is taylor series theorem and i'm going to use taylor series theorem to uh, phi x i'm going to write as phi xk plus okay which is same as phi xk plus delta xk where delta xk is obviously x minus x minus xk so this is my x minus xk this is delta xk okay if i do taylor series approximation in the neighborhood of xk okay so this is this is approximately equal to this phi of x is approximately equal to phi at xk plus grad phi so let's develop a notation let's develop a notation uh or let's put this grad phi xk so gradient of phi gradient of phi evaluated at xk that is what i mean so this transpose delta xk okay and there will be higher order terms okay i am neglecting higher order terms i am looking locally in the neighborhood of xk how this function behaves okay how does this function behave in the neighborhood of xk and then i want to look at the level surface that is phi x is equal to constant i want to look at level surface phi x equal to constant okay i want to look at level surface phi x equal to constant in a small neighborhood of xk some point xk okay uh, i get this approximation of phi x as this okay what happens at x equal to xk delta xk is equal to 0 okay so which means at x equal to xk if i am looking at a level surface okay that means phi xk is equal to constant at that point see suppose suppose you let's go back to here let's say this is your xk this is my xk okay i am trying to model this curve locally i am trying to model this curve locally okay you will see that actually i'll model it using the tangent okay i'll model it using a tangent plane that will become clear now soon so what is the simplest approximation this curve is there what is the simplest approximation you can construct straight line locally for a small neighborhood you can construct a straight line approximation to the curve that's what i am doing how do i get the slope of the straight line 
through Taylor series. I am getting that slope of the local slope of this line through Taylor series. Okay. So, Taylor series is my vehicle to construct the local approximation. So, now this phi xk is constant. Phi xk is constant. If I substitute here, okay, what will I get? See, this becomes C. So, C equal to C. So, what is the local behavior of the curve? So, this implies that gradient of phi at xk transpose delta xk is equal to 0. Is everyone with me on this? This is a scalar function by the way. This is a vector, gradient is a vector. Okay. This is a this is also a vector. Delta x k is also a vector. Okay. So this transpose this is 0. Geometrically, what does it mean? Yeah? The gradient is perpendicular to delta x k. Delta x, x minus x k is perpendicular locally to the gradient. Okay. So, locally gradient of phi is orthogonal to x minus x k. This is what we have found out actually actually this gradient transpose delta x k equal to 0 okay, is a equation of the tangent plane to the level surface. Okay. In general, I am talking in n dimensions. It is a tangent hyperplane in the uh, in the n dimensional space. Okay. So, well, what I want to show here is that this local behavior of the function in the neighborhood of the point x k can be used to find out the direction in which function decreases at the maximum rate. See, if I want to, if I am at x k, if I am at x k, just let us go back here. What I am doing, I am minimizing phi. Okay, I am minimizing phi. So, if I want to move, if I want to move from x k to x k plus 1, which direction I should move? I should move in that direction in which function decreases at the maximum rate. Why? Why? Question is why is it? What is directional derivative? So, I want to prove it. Angle will be? So, which is the directional derivative here? Delta x k is the directional derivative or gradient is the directional derivative? Gradient is the directional derivative. So, uh, I want to show that if delta x k is aligned along the directional derivative that is gradient, then function increases maximum. Okay? If it is aligned along negative of the if it is aligned along negative of the gradient direction, then the function decreases maximum. Okay. So, this this local gradient actually gives me maximum rate of increase and negative of that gives me maximum rate of decrease. And I am going to use this local gradient to come up with a new point x k plus 1. Okay. So, before I do that, I have to show that this is the maximum the direction of maximum descent. So, first interpretation that we have learnt here is that this is nothing but equation of the tangent hyperplane and delta x k is perpendicular to the gradient locally. Okay. Now, so I am looking at set of all x, I am looking at a unit ball in the neighborhood of x k. Okay. I am constructing a small unit ball in the neighborhood of x k okay, such that such that it is set of all points such that magnitude is unity of delta x k. Okay. So, just if you go back to this figure, 
I am constructing a small unit ball here. I am constructing a small unit ball here such that you pick up any point, okay, its distance from xk is less than 1. The distance from, is this clear? I am just picking up a set to do the analysis, okay. Now, okay, now what is going to help me here is something that you uh, probably can guess. What is going to help me here is Cauchy Schwarz inequality, okay. This is inner product of this vector with this vector, okay, which is less than or equal to by Cauchy Schwarz inequality. What is this? This is norm. right but then i am looking at i am looking at set of all x in the unit ball okay so this is one maximum value this can take is one so which means okay so if this is one so maximum value this can take is one then i can write that grad phi x k transpose delta x k this quantity okay, is strictly less than norm of this right. This inequality also means this inequality also means that minus of is less than I have just expanded this inequality here I had written absolute value absolute value so in a unit ball in the neighborhood of xk I can say that this quantity this quantity is bounded between these two numbers this is a positive number this is a negative number it this quantity cannot be smaller than this what is the smallest value this quantity can take when will it take this value when delta x is aligned along which direction gradient direction when delta x is aligned along gradient direction this this inequality will be equality smallest change now why i am worried about this okay let's go back and look here let's let's retain this figure let's go back here <coughs> see this phi x which is written as phi xk plus delta xk right i have written this like this and actually i am worried about how this function behaves phi x minus phi xk phi x minus phi xk i want to go to x from xk i want to go to a new value x from xk okay this is we say that in small neighborhood this is approximately equal to this is approximately equal to gradient of phi okay gradient of phi is given by this okay so this the behavior of this quantity actually dictates how locally the how this function behaves locally is it clear local this is Taylor series expansion I just wrote this some time back okay I am just rearranging I am just rearranging this I am this this thing on the right hand side I have taken it on the left hand side okay see if I move away from x k to some new x okay if I move away from x k to new x 
uh, which direction I should move. If I want to decrease the function, which direction I should move? I should move negative of the gradient direction. Okay, because what is the smallest value this can take? Using see, I'm I'm I am restricting myself to a unit ball around x k. I want to move inside this unit ball. I just want to know where to move inside this unit ball. What is the objective? I want to move in such a way that the function decreases at the maximum rate. Okay. Now, I know that from this Cauchy inequality, I know that the maximum rate of decrease will be obtained when delta x k is aligned along the gradient direction, but not along, negative of the gradient direction. Then I will get this minus here okay i'll get minus here this this uh, cauchy inequality uh, when do you get what is what does cauchy inequality tell you we had related cauchy inequality to cos theta angle okay uh, so i'm talking about two special angles one is angle 0 other is angle 180 okay negative and positive direction if you are if you are maximizing the function you should move along the positive of the gradient direction if you are minimizing the function you should move along the negative of the gradient direction because this difference will be smallest negative when will it be smallest negative look here when will it be smallest negative negative of the gradient direction Okay, so if I move along the negative of the gradient direction, okay, I will uh, decrease the function. Okay, I will decrease the function. So, way I should choose my next point, okay, from xk when I go to xk plus 1, I should choose my next point, okay, by moving along the negative of the gradient direction since I am minimizing the function. Okay, my objective was to minimize phi of x with respect to x k look uh, with respect to x okay locally what i find is that locally the function will decrease maximum if i move along negative of the gradient direction see what is negative of the gradient direction if this is if this is grad phi x k divided by norm right okay and negative of this and negative of this why i am dividing by this because i am looking at unit vectors i am looking at unit vectors so this is a unit vector okay what will be this transpose this square of the what will be this transpose this in a product in a product is square of the norm in a product of vector with itself square of the norm right so, if you if you if you take inner product of this with this, you'll get square of this divided by this. You'll get negative minus minus of. Is everyone with me on this? Is this clear? You move in the negative of the gradient direction, the function will locally decrease at the maximum rate. Okay. So that's going to be my algorithm for. So to find x k plus one. I am going to take x k and minus negative of the gradient direction. So, lambda g k where g k is nothing but grad f x k by norm ok. Is this fine? This is the direction, okay? This is the direction, or we can put plus here and take this minus. Doesn't matter. Whichever way you want to look. Negative of the gradient direction. I am taking unit direction along the gradient. Okay. I am well. Of course, I am looking at two norm. I am not really right now worried about other norms. So these are all uh, these are all two norms. Wherever I am writing norms, these are two norms. So, this is my negative of the gradient direction and what is this lambda now? Okay, now I know that 
I know that locally if I go along negative of the gradient direction, function is decreasing. <coughs> How much do I move? See, I just know that this direction is a steepest descent. Okay, I should move 1 meter, 5 meter, 10 meters. How much should I move? Okay, so I am going to put one unknown here which is step length. This is my step length and this is my direction. Okay, now how much to move? I am going to do uh, I am going to do another optimization problem. Okay, having decided to move in this direction, having decided to move in this direction, I am going to now solve for this problem. Lambda k is minimization with respect to lambda phi of Okay, what is the difference between the original problem and this minimization problem? This is a one dimensional minimization problem. Lambda is a scalar, lambda is a step length. Okay, the direction is fixed, how much to move is given by the step length parameter. Okay, now how to solve this problem? In some cases, this problem can be solved analytically, in some cases, this problem uh, has to be solved numerically. Okay, now if you go back and uh, if you just go back, this is called as line search, one dimensional optimization problem. This is called as line search because we know in which direction to move, we just want to find out how much to move. Okay, So, this phi becomes, this xk is known, gk is known, lambda is unknown with respect to one scalar, I have to find out. Of course, what I have to do is to solve for do phi by do lambda is equal to 0. I have to find out do phi by do lambda equal to 0. Whichever value gives me minimum, sorry, whichever value satisfies this optimality condition, I choose that value and use it for my step length. This has to be done in some cases, if phi is a highly complex nonlinear function, this has to be done using nonlinear optimization or using it, uh, iterative process you guess and then you find out a minimum. I have described that, but now in the case of solving a x equal to b, we will have some nice time. We can do this analytically. Okay, So, let me go back and uh, is this clear? Is the idea clear? The line of argument is like this, locally the steepest uh, or the direction in which objective function decreases maximum is negative of the gradient. Okay. You do not know how much to move, so you, you, you know the direction to move, but you do not know how much to move that is quantified by this lambda. Okay. And then we have to obtain lambda by one dimensional minimization with respect to lambda. Okay. I am just going to, yeah. Maximum value of? Uh, so, uh, I want to see, I want to find out, uh, see, I am I'm, I'm decreasing phi, right? Okay. So, now in one shot, I would like to decrease, when I am taking one step, I would like to decrease as much as possible. So, how do you find out how, how much is possible? See, just imagine that you are going down a slope. Okay. Now, let us say the slope is like this and then it flattens out. Okay. Now, locally, if you go down for one meter, your height will decrease, but your height might decrease even if you go 5 meters. No? So, how do you know how, how much to go? I know that this is local, local descent, but should I go 1 meter or 3 meters or 5 meters or 9 meters? 9 meters might take me up, I do not know. See, the, the contour could be like this and then going up. So, I should find out what is best possible step length. Okay. I should go so that there is a minimization. Otherwise, see all this, just remember one thing. You are trying to do a local movement only based on the local derivative. There is limited information one derivative of a function carries. Okay. So, you cannot take two large steps using just local gradient information. Okay. And then you should not take two small steps also, right? 
So to balance that, we actually introduce this lambda and then we minimize function with respect to lambda again and then find out how much to move. Okay. Now let's see its application in solving Ax equal to b. Okay. So my phi x, my phi x here is uh, now uh, I am going to formulate just for the sake of uh, writing simplicity, I am going to I am going to say that this is half x transpose a x minus x transpose b okay? and I am going to solve for the case where a is symmetric positive definite. If your matrix a is not symmetric positive definite, what to do you know already. Pre multiply both the sides by a transpose, so you do not have to. So I am just going to look at the case right now for deriving the algorithm for the sake of simplicity of notation. I am going to look at the case where A is A is symmetric and positive definite. Okay. Now let us apply the algorithm. This is my phi. Okay. I am I have a guess solution. My guess solution is xk. What is the local gradient? What is the local gradient? That is, what is grad? What is grad phi? Grad phi x minus x minus b. Differentiate this with respect to this is a vector transpose a x symmetric positive definite vector. Differentiate with respect to x. Differentiate this with respect to x. Derivative of this objective function with respect to x will give you a x minus b. What is what is phi x k evaluated at x k, x k is your guess solution. Okay. A x k minus a x k minus b. Everyone with me on this? A x k minus b. Okay. So, what I want to do next, well, I do not have to always find unit direction. I wrote the algorithm with unit direction. I can write it with respect to the direction and use lambda. Lambda will get scaled accordingly. Okay. So, I can say that I want to move now in the direction which is lambda g k, where g k is a x k minus b a x k minus b okay now you want to do the step length minimization you want to can you do the step length minimization can you solve it just try it so what is the step length minimization problem now what will be phi x what will be phi x k plus 1 what is phi x k plus 1? It will be half x k plus lambda g k transpose a x k plus lambda g k right minus what are the things which are known here? I know x k, I know g k because g k is function of x k, I know g k, I do not know only lambda. Okay. Can you tell me what will be, what will be this quantity do phi x k plus 1 by do lambda i want to set this equal to 0 what is this quantity what is this quantity just find out well there is one one small small problem here 
I want to move in the negative of the gradient direction. So, this is make one correction. I want to move in the negative of the gradient direction. The gradient direction is this, negative of the gradient direction is ok. So, this is the gradient direction and my g k direction in which I want to move is negative of the gradient direction. So, put minus here, put a minus here. Well, what you have to do of course is uh, expand this, what you will realize is that the terms x k transpose a x k will vanish because they are not functions of lambda. You have to only take those terms in which lambda will appear. There will be cross terms and there will be lambda square will come out because lambda square g k transpose a g k. Okay. Here again you can neglect the term x k transpose b because it is not function of lambda. You can take only this term. Okay. What do you get after you minimize? Just expand, just try. What is this quantity? You do not have to substitute this, you do not have to substitute this. You maintain everything in terms of g k. Okay. Maintain everything in terms of g k. Try to find out what is, which value of lambda will give you What I, what I expect is if you do this, if you do this scalar optimization problem, you should get an equation, just check this, you should get an equation of the type lambda into g k transpose a g k minus b transpose g k equal to 0. You will get an equation of this type. Just check. If you expand this, if you expand this, when you expand this, you will get only one variable polynomial you will get only one variable polynomial lambda square, lambda and constant. You will get only one variable polynomial because lambda is a scalar, g is a known vector, x is a known vector. Okay? So, actually it turns out that lambda k which minimizes this is nothing but b transpose g k divided by g k transpose a a g k. Okay. So, my algorithm, my numerical algorithm becomes how do you summarize the numerical algorithm? Okay. This is my numerical algorithm. How do I how do I go from x k to x k plus 1? I first compute negative of the gradient direction. See what is the simplicity here? No matrix is in, inversion is involved. No matrix inversion is involved. Okay. I just have to compute the gradient direction. Gradient direction is nothing but actually error between right hand side and left hand side. This is my guess solution. This is my B. Actually, I want this. When will you when will you get the solution? Gradient becomes equal to 0. What is the meaning of gradient becoming equal to 0? You have reached the solution. Very, very straightforward, simple interpretation in this case. If gradient becomes equal to 0, gradient becoming equal to 0 is the necessary condition for optimality. Right? Gradient becoming equal to 0 is a necessary condition of optimality. When if if the gradient is non zero, okay, you will keep moving. How much to move? Lambda k times g k. How much to move? Lambda k times g k. 
okay this is the optimum step length if you move less than this okay then you are not decreasing the function enough if you do more than this that will not help okay using the local gradient you can move only this much okay you can the local gradient you can move only this much this is the optimum value to which you should move every time this is a scalar calculation this is a inner product calculation this is an inner product calculation a is symmetric positive finite this is inner product calculation okay calculating this scalar is very very easy calculating this error very very easy when will you terminate when will you terminate the iterations when gk is very very small right so i could terminate the iterations by saying gk norm gk is less than some epsilon norm gk is very very small or you could also uh, sometimes it's better to check whether you can put this also uh, gk plus 1 minus gk this can be a termination criteria if there is no significant change in the derivative okay if you have very large matrices this is very very useful this method this method can quickly come to the solutions particularly if a is symmetric positive finite then you can reach the solution i think there is a specific result about this i'll talk about it later there is a modification of this called as conjugate gradient method uh and we'll talk about the conjugate gradient method too uh very quickly in the next lecture and then i'll move on to well conditioned and ill conditioned systems so uh this method actually is very often used for solving large large scale problems and uh, computations involved are very very simple you just have to compute the gradient direction and inner products okay and you can very quickly get approximate solutions of or you can quickly go very close to the true solution uh, using this method okay